Welcome to another exciting episode of Cruising Kitsap. Trains have been used in our country since the 19th century. They've been used to transport people and products all around the country. Kitsap Live Steamers, located at South Kitsap Regional Park here in Port Orchard, is an opportunity to experience a miniature railroad. The tracks behind me are called seven and a half gauge. That means there's seven and a half inches between the two tracks. Not only do people travel from all around Puget Sound to see the Kitsap Live Steamers, they also travel from all around the world to this unique, one-of-a-kind train location. We're going to go for a ride and on a behind-the-scenes look at what makes this unique Port Orchard attraction so special here in Kitsap County. Today with me is Marie Weaver, founder of the Kitsap Live Steamer Railroad Club, can we call it? It's a railroad club, but we are a 501c3. We are a nonprofit, yes. How long ago did you start the club, Marie? Um, actually, I, the concept came about 25 years ago, but we actually started operations uh, for the club on July 27th of uh, 1990. Two. And tell me, there's three types of trains that run here on these tracks. Yes. Can you tell me about them? Okay. The first, uh, the first one that is, um, and most people who come here see, is uh, the club's locomotive, and the most, and those, those are uh, one of them is a gas-powered, and it has a Honda engine. Pretty much, people would recognize it as something that would be in their lawnmower. There is an electric that is, it has a sound system in it that sound, makes it sound like a diesel, but it is run off of two deep cell marine batteries. And then there is a, uh, what we call live steam. And those particular types of locomotives run off of some type of either a fossil fuel or a gas type fuel. The steam engine is something that we don't hear about too much these days. It's a very special engine. Can you tell our viewers a little bit more about that engine and how the steam works? Okay. Um, basically, the uh, steam locomotives are, um, m most of the time, they, the fuel in those are a um, propane type. Uh, it's run and have, they have a propane tank uh, aboard the train somewhere. The propane is fed into a firebox where a fire is built and there's water within the locomotive that runs over and through uh, some tubes that are, is run across what they call a crown sheet and that being able to run across that with the water in the tubes heats up the water to the point where it makes steam. And the steam then is placed and goes down in through other tubes and pipes to where it goes into the wheels and into the trucks and that's what makes it go forward. Now, um, the steam trains take a little while, the engine itself, to heat up. Can you tell us about okay. how long it takes to heat up and the, what's involved the, with that? Basically, once the uh, engineer uh, puts water in and starts the fire, it takes about anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour to bring that uh, locomotive up to operation because you don't want to over stress the metals within the uh, inner workings of the boiler and uh, other and the tubes and the crown sheet because to overstress them would end up and could end up causing them to fail which means that they would end up losing the fire. Um, I know a lot of people have been concerned when they hear, especially here, when they hear the, the steam let go, they're afraid something's going wrong. But basically, if the steam gets um, a little overbearing, there is mechanisms and um, uh, different types of gear that will let some of that off, just like your wood with a, any uh, tea kettle. Oh, all right. But um, basically, it's for, it takes the uh, engineer, uh, they have to build a fire, and uh, uh, with uh, propane, they will start the fire usually with some type of piece of, of paper or, or, or a, 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 what we call a clicker, which actually is like a barbecue, what you, what you light a barbecue with. So to be able to light the fire and get that particularly going. There also in the club, there is um, a gentleman who runs coal. Oh. And um, with the coal, they have to start it with some type of wood 
or some type of paper to get the, just like you would with your barbecue, to get that coal up and going and get it hot enough to be able to heat the water that would uh, continue to make steam that would end up cause, uh, running the locomotive. Now the uh, steam trains go through a yearly maintenance check. Can you tell us a little bit about that? One of the things that we have worked with the state on, and that is a certification of our boilers. And in order to be able to run a locomotive here, uh, we made sure that the safety of those locomotives are at the premium. Once a year, uh, in April, the state sends out a boiler ins uh, uh, inspector to our location here in Kitsap. Uh, at the park and they certify every one of our, uh, our locomotives that run on our track. And those particular locomotives that are brought in by their owners uh, are made sure that they are safe and up and operational. And anybody that is visiting from out of state who wants to, we have uh, a couple gentlemen here in our club that can certify oh. and, and, um, and then pass that information on to the state. Um, this has been part of what we, what in order to be able to come and be in the park that we worked out with the state is to be able to have certification of, those, of our boilers. Every three years we are a part of what they call the IBLS, that's the Organization of Independent Live Steam. And they have a road trip. People start up in Canada and then they come here. They brought their locomotives from Spain, from Germany, from Japan. They bring their trains here yeah. to ride on these tracks. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's amazing that they actually have them um, brought in for uh, IBLS because um, they actually have to crate them anywhere from three to four months ahead of time oh, wow. uh, to be able to ship them. Uh, I'm not sure I'd let my locomotive go that long. <laughs> I like my toys and um, these people are very dedicated to what they do to be able to do that. But the fact is the road trip is so much fun for all of us. I, am, I participate by hauling mine uh, uh, from Canada down and through to uh, at least uh, southeast Oregon. I've not gone down as far as Riverside, California, but they do end up down in the LA area and Orange County area. and. Um, then they turn around and ship them back from there. Let's talk a little bit about the track. It's a mile long. It's 4,400 feet on the main line, and then with the sidings and the yard, it encompasses about 6,600 feet. I think typically when people think of a railway enthusiast or a train collector, they think of a, a man or a boy, but it's open to women and there are a lot of women and young ladies around and mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about the club members and the families that come and uh, children that participate in the... Well, um, the, to kind of give you a little history, there were 15 families who started, uh, uh, my, once we had the the uh, incorporation going. There were 15 of us who actually started to work on the club. And right now there are only three of us left because of, uh, uh, the, you know, of our age group. But uh, as far as women is concerned, we have um, not only myself who is uh, and owns the locomotive and operates, but we have three others here in the club that own and operate their own locomotives. Uh, across the hobby, there's probably anywhere from 100 to 150 women who play with uh, our with our size railroad. <laughs> and um, I encourage young women who uh, have um, any interest in railroading or any interest in trains at all, and there's a number of you out there, I know, uh, to come and say hello. We'll teach you whatever you want to know. <laughs> because uh, this is not just a male hobby. This is something that those of us are women who uh, enjoy the, uh, the, the, you know, what we do. As far as families are concerned, live steam or this type of size of, of uh, hobby is a family affair. And it, um, we're going on four generations in our family now. And um, I encourage families to come and bring their children because this is something a family can do. The, and it's, it's not costly. It's something that you can do. Uh, for, and I know you don't talk about, we're not supposed to talk about much about cost, but for under a hundred bucks a year, 
you, you're gonna have so much fun here with your family and, and, and enjoy each other, enjoy other people. The kids that are here are being taught about locomotive and, how, and locomotive history. They're being taught to respect other people's property and how to run it and how to make sure and maintain it and not be uh, little stinkers, all right? <laughs> Now, um, how old do you have to be to operate a train? Um, we basically start them in uh, an operation at age 16. However, we will uh, teach them anything from uh, 13 up. At, at 16, we do have what we call a junior membership. And that means that the parents don't have to be, be a part of the railroad, even though we would encourage it. Um, they, the parents don't have to. There would be a sponsor here who would take that 16-year-old under their wing and teach, the, teach them how to run the locomotives and how to be responsible with them. Marie, if someone wanted more information or wanted to contact Kitsap Live Steamers, how would they go about doing so? Well, there are a couple of different ways. First of all, we do have a uh, website. It's kitsaplivesteamers.org, uh, and uh, that's something that can be done. Or uh, there is a phone number, which is 360-871-6414. Um, and there is a person that answers that phone. It's not recorded. There is a body on the end, other end of that. You don't have to press nine to go somewhere. No. <laughs> no. It's a beautiful park, and I hope that you viewers will come here soon at South Kitsap Regional Park, the Kitsap Live Steamers. Marie, thank you so much for being on the show and telling our viewers more about this amazing experience here. Oh, thank you. I thank you for your interest in the railroad. It is a passion and something I've spent quite a bit of my time doing, but it is something that I believe families would find very, very entertaining. It's been a great day at Kitsap Live Steamers, located here at the South Kitsap Regional Park at Jackson and Lund Streets in Port Orchard. This is a perfect example that you don't have to go very far in our county to have a great time at little or no cost. Thanks for watching Cruising Kitsap. I'm Samantha McGuire. We look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>